it zooms in like that when I start recording. That is weird. Anyway, um, this is a follow-up video for uh, my cookery that I bought from Cookery House. Sorry, my camera's above my head. I can barely see it. Yeah, okay. Hope the lighting is good. I had to dim the lighting a bit because my camera started uh, flickering in its uh, exposure. So, I hope this shows up. I really do. Um, Alright, so, uh, this is a follow-up video from the initial unboxing. And, uh, and also a review video. Um, because I've been meaning to do a review video, and tomorrow my Toro House Cookery is coming in. And I really want to get this up and run, posted before that comes in. So, um, it's kind of a spur of the moment. Uh, I already did like two review videos of some other knives um, that you just saw. And I'm kind of just doing them in, in sequence here. So bear, bear with me here. It's not going to be all that professional. <coughs> Alright, so this is the Cookery Alive Knife. It came from. It was made by uh, uh, Cookery House, and the polish on it is uh, it, uh, defined as unpolished, and it is the initial intention of, uh, of the design and overall um, reason for this model is for a survival cookery. Um, so uh, they didn't really uh, go through and make a bunch, you know. Uh, you know, do a lot of finishing, finishing work on it, and you know, find find work on it to make it look pretty. It's really kind of a rough, uh, you know, rustic cookery, and uh, it works. I have my only, I can't complain about its functionality. It does chop wood. I have used it uh, extensively for making some firewood for uh, this summer, and I still need to make some more for this winter. But, um, functionality wise it, it works um, but I do have some complaints about it let's start with this this is my biggest pet peeve is the damn sheath it's horrible it's it's awful it's got this thin very stiff very hard leather uh, frog that uh, I'm really worried about drying out and cracking that and is held in by these rivets, which I'm pretty sure are brass. And uh, the leather is—it looks nice, you know, on a scabbard. It looks nice, but it's very thin. It is very thin. I mean, I can move it with my hand, my finger here. I don't know if you can tell. Excuse me. Um, and uh, it is very thin, and I am not pleased at it with it at all. This shit is gonna tear on me out in the woods. I mean, I one single thorn branch or thorn or sharp branch, thicket, whatever you want to call it, bramble, and this shit's gonna tear right off. It is. The stitching back here is very thin. Very, uh, very thin threading. They're very close together, which, uh, you don't want. So, that's gonna tear. And for a, uh, leg wrap, where you wrap it ar around your thigh to keep it from, uh, banging around, it's just a thin piece of leather that's just, is it really tight on? It is, it is tight on. Wow, cheap. And here's the cheapest part of this. It came with these neat card uh, on but they're very crude. They're very crude. I had to polish them up with uh, metal polish and sandpaper just because they got rusty. They actually got rusty, and I had to. I first took sandpaper to them, really fine grain that I still had laying lay around, and then I ren waxed or flips and ren waxed them. And the edge on this carta is absolute shit. The uh, angle on it is very steep. It, I mean, it, it, if you look at it in the cross section, I don't know if I can show you. 
but it, it, it's very reminiscent of a very crude axe, honestly. The, the, the edge on it is just shit. If you can see the, uh, you know, how, how thick that angle is, it is shit. I mean, it feels sharp, but it really isn't. It's not going to cut me. Yeah. Um, shot mock. I'm actually pleased. It's nice and thick. I hope it's t uh, hardened. Because, um, I like it. I like having a, this thing around. Because I could probably use this. I can see uses for this thing as, you know, as a prying tool, digging instrument, just general poking and prodding. Maybe holding something down that I want to, I want to touch with my fingers, stuff like that. You know, this this can come in handy. I can really see the uh, uses in it. But here's my gripe about the quality of this sheath. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> that is. The, uh, the level of quality we, uh, that I, I have received from Cookery House. Absolute shit. I mean, these don't even hold in place. They don't. They just, they just sit inside it. And, you know, yeah, you wear it on your belt, you know, vertically, but as soon as you, what if you fall or trip or something, you know, you're going to lose these things. You're, they're, they're just going to fall right out and you're going to lose them. So what the hell? What the hell's the fucking point? Alright, enough of that. I'm done with those. Let's get to the knife. Now, chopping wise, it, it does work. It does its job. It's got a nice thick back. It's, uh, I want to say two thirds of a half an inch. It's not a full half inch. Because, yeah, that is not a half inch. Trust me. It's almost there. Almost there. But, yeah, that's not what I'm worried about. Um, this thing rusted on me almost immediately. And it stained, I got a stain up in, up in here that was from that, uh, maybe the wood oil there uh, that, that I was uh, messing with. I don't know where it came from really, but I think it was some sort of wood oil or something. And I was chopping on this with uh, pine 2x4s, which is all we had for firewood. And it does the job. It splits them really well. I did uh, some serious tawning. I mean, I was just meant to try and bend it and break it, and it didn't do anything. So they built it for tough. Um, I even batoned the shit out of the hilt, and it didn't come loose at all. It's it, it's still on there. It's still rock solid, so I can't gripe about that. Um, the wood did shrink against the tang. Um, yeah, the tang is jutting out just a tiny bit. So, that, that is an issue. Uh, it's probably going to end up cracking and fracturing. So, well, the finish work, well, the whole knife is not meant to be very pretty looking. It's meant to be a survival knife, but, you know, as you've seen, survival-wise, I'm going to lose my chop back and car because they won't secure in the sheath. So, that's a failure. That's a red flag. And, um... One weird thing is, as I was chopping the wood, I don't know if it was from maybe staples that I didn't see or what, but I got a lot of nicks, a lot of little tiny nicks all the way down, and I had to take my sharpening stone, because I don't have anything else right now, and uh, uh, I, went over, I went carefully over the edge, I, meant, I made sure I, I stayed at that angle, and uh, try not to scratch this flatness. And I know, and there's some highs and lows in the steel. Uh, if you can see it, there's some highs and lows in the steel, and uh, it made for a really messy-looking, you know, grinding surface. You can see all those. You can see where I've uh, taken the stone to it. It's very messy, but it did sharpen up fairly well. And it does chop. It it, it is uh, it is comfortable to handle a little bit. I mean, um, the, the way this back here makes you hold it, it puts the ring right 
on your ring finger. And it's supposed to be like this, but as you see, my the meat of my palm starts, you know, coming over it like a like a fat person's belly on a belt. <laughs> like me. <laughs> and it makes me, you know, raise my grip up towards the uh, uh whatever you call it. I want, to, I want to call it a trunnion for some reason, but I know it's not, that's not right. But yeah, it makes me bite up the, or scoot up the handle too much. So, that, that is definitely a problem. Um, the overall profile, also, I'm very disappointed in, because in their sales picture, I had a deeper belly. And that really perturbed me, because um, I really wanted... I really wanted the one I saw on the picture on their page, on their on their website page, and this one just feels like a kind of a, kind of a steroid-ridden serpente. Really, uh, it doesn't feel like a, an actual kukri. It just feels, it just looks too serpente in style because it is very flat and very narrow here. Oop, almost take myself. <laughs> And, uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, again, cosmetics is butt ugly. The sheath is worth, maybe, as far as I can throw it at a car. And, uh, there's definitely some problems with the handle. It doesn't fit right. It doesn't sit in my hand right. And it does love the rust like a bitch. So you definitely want to put a protective coating on it. If you're gonna get one yourself, but my recommendation is don't buy from Cookery House. That they, the, the the cookery I got from them is shit, and I don't like it. So, but I cannot complain about its functionality. It does chop. It does work. It is very for tough. I tried to break it. I tried to bend it. Um, you know, I tried to break the the hilt off with batoning. And it didn't, it didn't do anything. Even the wood handle is solid. I don't see any cracks on it. Which I'm actually impressed about. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't complain about its functionality. If, if you can't afford, you know, $150, $200 proper cookery from either Core Blades or Himalayan Imports, then, yeah, Cookery House is your third rate option. Um, you, I paid, this, uh, the cookery itself was about 70 something dollars, maybe 80 dollars, and then I had to pay 32 dollars for international shipping, because they do manufacture these in Nepal, in the place of origin of their uh, original creation, so you gotta, you gotta be ready for that, so, so, and, uh, well, I cannot complain about its functionality. I got, I'm complaining about every fucking thing else, because everything else about it is shit. So, but I am... Well, I can decide. I might keep it around just for a comparison to my other cookies that I plan to collect. I don't know. I might just end up selling it in the yard sale this coming weekend. So, we'll, we'll see. I don't know. If you guys want me to keep it, let me know. <laughs> I really can't decide. Nah. Anyway, I hope this video helps you uh, in deciding whether or not to buy from Cookery House or not. If you can afford better, you can go to Tora Blades or even Himalayan and get one of their, uh, you know, giant over thick <laughs> ink colas. They have a uh, yeah Himalayan Imports has a, a line of ink cola cookeries. I do actually want to get one of because they claim them as certified pry bars and they have a, uh, a warranty to them where if they break it or not, you can get one. Uh, they'll send you another one for free. So there's some things about that I like. And I want I just want to get one so I can have, like, you know, something to compare um, all the other cookeries I have with each other. So if you, if you can invest in a better cookery, invest in a better cookery and don't go to a cookery house, go to Torah Blades or Himalayan Imports.
but if it's all you can afford and you really want something for chopping and hacking, then yeah, it'll, it'll do its job. It will. But it's going to be shit and everything. <laughs> it's going to look like shit. It's going to, the scabbard and sheath is going to be shit. Yeah, so be ready for that. I got to warn you guys on that. Because I did not know that when I, got, <laughs> when I bought this knife, I had no, I didn't know anything about Himalayan imports or Tora blades. And, uh, it was like that night after I got it, got it, and was looking at the handle and everything, I was wondering why it looked so crappy. That's because Cookery House is a third rate, third uh, rated of uh, the top uh, manufacturers. So, I actually got a third rate cookery. So, uh, yeah. Uh, that's all I can think of to say about it. Alright, I hope this video helped. I'm gonna go get drunker and play video games. I'll see you guys later.